So you want to be a picture book writer, then you got to write picture books. And you're going to need a bucket load of bright ideas for titles, plots, and hooks. If you're partial to prose or you're raring to rhyme, then repeat after me. It's a challenge, but I'm going to tackle each story one month at a time with 12 by 12. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about each book because I think each book is really touches on a different part of uh, my work and how I approach my work. So Alma, to me, Alma, the most important of, the most important part of Alma is the very end, which is that note at the end. Now, why is it to me the most important part? Alma, it's great as a book. It's a great story, uh, but the story is just a door into what the readers will will share with the children and this is you know given that it's a picture book i'm calling the reader could be a caregiver a teacher a librarian a, a you know anyone that is reading to a child and it closes with those two questions what is the story of your name what story would you like to tell i knew i knew i wanted to close the book this way why because at this by doing this i'm i'm switching I'm switching the story and I'm giving the child a chance to either hear the story of their name or have that conversation between, you know, the, the friends or the teachers and, you know, that moment when they are talking to, you know, people who they care about and, and who they love. So I want you to pay attention to the hair of this little girl. This is me and my house in Lima, uh, but pay attention to the hair. and. <laughs> This is my first version of who I thought was going to be the character of Alma. Alma was not, not, did not start as Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela. It started as Juana Carlota. It was my name. And it was a story of my name, really. Uh, but sadly, I kept getting stuck. And the reason why I was getting stuck is because I was telling my own story. The minute that I switched the story from Juana's story to Alma's story, all of this is, you know, I'm free. I'm no longer talking about myself. I'm talking about this little girl and everything just, just you know, happened. It was much easier. So this is the second version of who I thought was going to be Alma. And you have to think that between the first idea of the book of Alma and the moment that I hold the first book, it's a, pro a period of eight years. So this is not something that happened fast by any means. So as I'm working on the story and I'm working on this book, I keep changing my mind of who this girl was going to be, who this character was going to be. And this number three, this is number four, which was, I almost thought this was going to be Alma. I, I was almost absolutely positive that this was, to be, this was going to be the character of Alma. Until one day I'm working, I found this photo. This is my grandmother, my, da my, mom, my dad's mom. And I never met her because she passed in 1967 and I was not born until 1971. So I did not meet her. And something about the photo just haunted me. And I don't know, I cannot tell you why, but I started sketching it. I something, I, I thought I needed to, maybe perhaps I thought that by sketching it, I could understand more about her. I don't know, or the photograph of what happened. I don't know, but I started sketching it. And then I move on to painting my great grandmother on my mom's side, uh, who her name was Rosa, we call her Tota. And one day <laughs> I draw my grandma, my mom's mom, and who, funny enough, hated her name also. Maria de Fredes Vinda was her name, but she always went by Fredes. She hated her name. <clears throat> And as I'm working on this, I draw this little girl. And when I'm working on this, I know that something, something's right, absolutely right here. And I start, that's when I start playing, playing with names. And that's why I show these, because you can see how I'm starting to think how names will go together. I wanted a long name. I wanted a big name. And I do much more character sketches of Alma. And I, by now, I know. This is, this is, this is it, I'm set, this is her. And it's Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela, which will not change much uh, from the, from, you know, this will be pretty much how she goes in the picture book on the cover. 
There were a few things that I was really clear about in AMA. One of them was type. I am, um, I mean, I was chasing graphic design because I love type and I love how, you know, the idea of how you can make the world more beautiful just by how you look at things, right? So type, type has a big, it, type is really important to me. So I knew that part of my story had to be had to be told with text, with this type, and that each name had to, in some way, tell a little bit of the story of the relative we were, you know, we were talking about in the book. So type, I knew type was going to be key in my book very early on. I knew I wanted to work in black and white because I had this this clear idea that I wanted the book to feel like a photo album. So when we look at photo albums, when I look at my photo albums from my, the ones picture, with pictures from my grandparents and great grandparents, they are all, and you know, relatives before them, they were all black and white and sepia tone photos. And I knew I wanted to include my family. So what happens? I make Sofia, who was my grandmother, Juana. I make Esperanza, who was my great grandmother, Tota. Jose was my grandfather, Victor Manuel. Pura is uh, inspired on my mom and that mix of pagan and religious and that is so unique to Latin America and that I absolutely love that how you can make religious beliefs and indigenous beliefs and blend them together and have this brand new thing that grows out of it that is just so unique to the to Latin America yeah and then Candela was oh my grandmother Fred, Maria de Fredesvinte it's all her um another aspect that was very important was the cut not that it was important to have a black and white book but it was also important to have these accents and that was i was very clear on what colors i wanted to use i wanted this blue which in, i think it was great it's called gray slate in phrase my color i wanted this blue everything that was hand down, handed down to alma from a relative had these blue hints, including the type. And everything that was Alma's had and was brand new to the story, brand new to her and this life of Alma's was pink. With the idea of someday this pink the looks, this toy that has pink accents will ha be handed down, which item will be handed down and turn blue when somebody will be named after her. Um, so Alma, it is a story about identity, family, pride, and love. Why do I mention this? When I was working on Alma, Stephanie, my agent, will ask me, so Juana, what is your story about? And I could never to tell me in one sentence, what is this story about? And I could never put it in one sentence because I would say, well, it's about, it's a mother, it's a daughter and dad story. So it's, but it's also about family and it's about heritage it's about pride in your family it's about <laughs> and there were all these aspects and I could not put it into you know one sentence I could never when I focus I couldn't I just couldn't so we settle with we are everyone and I think this really summarizes Salma we are everyone that came before us and at the same time we are very uniquely ourselves and I think it's really really says what Alma is all about and then the Spanish book, the Spanish title, which, you know, there. This to me was, it's, I added and included it because it's such an important moment. This was at the ALA uh, midwinter when Alma is announced, Stephanie is on the right. Uh, Oralia, Gar um, Oralia Garza de Cortez is on the left. She was one of the three librarians who studied the Pura Belpre medal. And it was such a momentous occasion to have them both there when they announced the award. Uh, something that is very, to me, important is that Alma is the first book that was initially released in Spanish that carries the Caldecott medal, Caldecott honor medal uh, sticker, I should say sticker, the Caldecott sticker. To me, as a Spanish speaker, as Spanish being my first language, it is it is huge, it is very important. Uh, and of course, the most important part is, you know, when the book reaches the hands of the children and how they see themselves in the book. 
So La Princesa and the Bee. La Princesa and the Bee was completely Do it together so never you fear It's a handy little way to help you kick into gear You're amazing, exciting Look out, cause you're writing 12 by 12 12 manuscripts 12 by 12 12 picture books 12 by 12